everybody. My name is Kim Eich and I'm a solutions engineer with Epicor. I've been with the company for 14 years and prior to being an Epicor employee, I was sitting in your chair, I was also an Epicor customer. So as James said, we're going to take a high level overview of Epicor financials today, but certainly welcome an opportunity to meet with uh, you and your teams individually for some deeper dives um, once you've had a chance to understand um, what it looks like moving forward. So to kick off here, I just want to you know cover navigation and, and what I'm displaying here, and we call this our active homepage. The concept of the active homepage is similar to your Windows desktop or your phone home screen, giving you access to the, the things that you do every day, the information that you need, um, and really keeping you really efficient and organized as far as you know how we want to lay this out to make you more efficient throughout your daily duties. This is customizable either by roll code or by individual user and I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a moment but just to acclimate you here these blue tiles are shortcuts to programs and screens so chart of accounts and journal entries and reports such as the trial balance and so forth. These charts and graphs over to the right hand side, this is called Epicor Data Discovery. These are our queries of the database. Again, this comes with the software on day one, you'll have these queries available to you. We'll take a deeper dive on that in just a moment. What we can glean just from uh, the queries that have been pre-built for you out of the box. From here, I can also launch applications. So, you know, typically we're in Excel a uh, great portion of the day. And so I don't have to minimize this and, and go, you know, to my desktop and launch an application. I can do that directly from within the application, including perhaps, you know, links to websites. So if there's some place that we go quite frequently throughout the course of the day, again, I don't have to minimize the application. I stay self-contained within the software and can launch from my desktop. So if you'll notice here, I can also have multiple tabs across the top here. So again, very role-based, accounts payable, accounts receivable, and really able to you know, gear these and target these to the, the information and the programs and the access that I need throughout the course of my daily duties. Now in the background, there is a, you know, a typical menu structure. So if I click this little grid icon here, it's going to expand the menu. And under financial management, what you'll see are all all of the modules here. So for instance, if we take a look at accounts payable, within accounts payable or any of the modules, you'll see three folders. The setup folder is your master files, your setup files, your suppliers and your bank accounts and your term codes and so forth. General operations are where we enter invoices and we pay them and we do bank reconciliation. And then we have a folder for the canned reports that come with the software. So in addition to having access to the menu and everything that's available under the hood, we can also search the menu. So for instance, if I say, I don't remember where the trial balance is, I can just begin to type that. The menu will auto filter for me according to that, to that that selection that I input there. In addition to which, we can also flag any report program setup file as a favorite by clicking the star icon. So in essence, you can build out your entire own personalized menu structure here. We can also get back to where was the last place I just was. I didn't mean to close that. I want to get right back to it. I can go back via my recent uh, menu structure as well. So there's a lot of capabilities here. And again, um, we don't want anybody to have to become a, a master of where to find something in the menu and as well be able to deploy those shortcuts to their home page. A couple of things I also want to point out about the active home page. Wherever you see a question mark, and you will see this on every screen, we can launch our embedded help, our learning center. So notice, first of all, that when I click that, all of the results are context aware. It knows where I launched help from. And so it filtered the results based on the fact that we're on the active homepage. And we've got many different ways to learn, such as videos. Okay, we're in the YouTube generation now, right? And people learn by watching three to five minute little videos about how to change the company in the active homepage or how to personalize it for each individual user. We also have articles which are, you know, your standard old school PDFs. I want to print it. I want to make notations on it. I want to file it away for future use. And also we have the ability to have guided learning. So basically this is going to, on top of my screen here, show me step by step how to do something. So for instance, I said that we can personalize the homepage. So if I click this guided learning here, it's going to step me through there. So over to the right here, you can say it says, oh, click here to begin. Okay, I'm going to click that little ellipsis there. All right, it says click edit. I'm going to 
click edit. And oh, that's right, she said we could have multiple tabs and I can do that just by clicking that plus sign there. If I click next, then it says, well, what do you want to add to your active homepage? App links are these shortcuts to programs. Uh, discovery cards and chart views, that is Epicor data discovery. Again, this is predefined content for you. We can also embed images, as I mentioned, local applications, as well as websites. So you don't need to be a, a tech uh, savvy person or um, very creative. It's all you know been pre-baked for you and ready for you to really gear this towards uh, the things that are important to you throughout the course of your day. Lastly, I just want to take an opportunity to talk about um, some navigation and I'm going to launch here with our age payable Epicor data discovery chart view here. So if we launch this, what you can see is that I'm looking at my age payables by aging bucket. And if I hover over there, I can see the amounts and how old they are. If I also click this little grid icon here, I can see all of the information feeding into this chart view. You'll notice that there are seven uh, pages of information related to the suppliers and the invoices that I have on my age payables. Now we have a out of the box age payable report, but this really allows me to kind of dice and slice against that same data set in a more meaningful fashion. One thing I want to keep in mind as we go through the course of the day, wherever you see something that looks like Microsoft Soft Excel, and by that I mean it's got rows and it's got columns, we can export any view that looks and displays like this to Microsoft Excel. Very robust capabilities. This is throughout the entire application. It's also bi-directional. I'm going to show you that as well. But prior to dropping all of this information down to Excel, I'm just going to hide that grid view there. We can also take different looks at it. So this is a very large query. And so I can look at different measures or different categorizations of the data in this query. So I could say, well, you know, age buckets, that's great, but it might be more helpful if I'm looking at this by supplier. So I can just start to type supplier. Again, all of the options filter for me. So I'm going to look at this by supplier. Now I'm looking at my age payables by outstanding balance by supplier. You can see that as I hover over that. And if I prefer to look at a bar chart, which I do, I'm just going to get rid of my age column uh, data set there. Now I'm looking, again, age payables by supplier, but it's really starting to paint a picture for me. I can see the, you know, who has the largest representation of what would typically, you know, generate on the canned report we have out of the out of the application. In addition to which, I can apply some filters over to the right hand side. So I could filter this by supplier group. This is a field on the supplier master, or for a particular supplier, perhaps for a specific invoice. I might just want to focus on, you know, let's just take a look at our oldest outstanding age payables. So I can click on this age column here, and I'll say, well, I want to look at everything that's over 60 here or over 120, over 90, I can do that cumulative as well. And notice that the graph snaps to uh, the filters that I'm applying to that data. I can also add another data filter here. So I'll say, well, I want to look at my old payables. I also want to look at perhaps the larger values. So let's take a look at the ones where the age value is greater than, I'll say $500. And notice it filtered for me automatically again. What about $5,000? So again, it auto filtered for me, including all of the invoices here. We only have one page now of the results from the filter that I applied to it. Now, if this is the way that I'd always want to save, and I'm going to, um, if I, this is the way I always want to view this portion of the query, I can save this version of it to my active homepage. So, you know, five people might have the same query filtered in different fashions to play, deployed to their active homepage. Now, while we're here, I also want to talk about the ability to, again, if it looks like Excel, I can click on a column header, I can sort by that column header, but we're going to go ahead and drill in. Wherever you see a box with an outward arrow, that means we can drill in to that particular record. So from here, we call this a context menu. Again, these come defined out of the box. They can also be expanded upon through implementation, but from here, I want to go ahead and drill into supplier entry. And so what I want to do is introduce you to the structure of the screens, whether it's a master file, which is what we're drilling into here uh, for our particular supplier, or it's an entry screen where we're entering invoices or payables, whatever that may be. So when we launch into it, it's going to take me directly to my supplier, Acme. And what you'll see here is that we have a lot of cards. Okay, the supplier 
Master. Master is a very large table here. And first of all, I can see that I've got my detail here relative to my supplier, the supplier name, the default terms code, she'll define what these are. It's a default can be changed on any particular record, including perhaps payment method. Notice the payment methods we have to pay with checks, uh, ACH files, credit cards, MICR, and so forth. Again, it's a default, can be changed for any particular record. But keep in mind as we go through the demonstration today that any view that we're displaying here can also be personalized. So if I click the little ellipsis in the upper right hand corner here and go down to personalization, first of all, I can see all of the cards that are available here. Now, if there is a card that I don't ever deal with and I really don't want to look at any further, for instance, you can see that I, there's a card for Rojas. I don't ever deal with, uh, you know, any electrical type of capabilities related to Rojas. I just turn that entire card off. I don't want to look at it. In addition, on any of the other tabs where I do need to look at it, but maybe I don't need to look at every single field. We have a lot of capabilities. I highly doubt anybody uses all of it. So if it's something that doesn't pertain to you, we can turn on and off any field as well. So again, user uh, interface is very important to us and we want it to be, show me what I need to do you know need to see and what I need to know and if I if it's not relative I'm just going to go ahead and not have to take a look at it so we've got our supplier detail we can have contacts for suppliers obviously for making ACH payments we're going to have to capture bank accounts with their routing information and their bank account information this can all be masked and encrypted so we can display as little of the information as is applicable in addition to which you can have as many banks and remit to's as needed in addition, I also wanted to just talk a little bit about this tab here called USA. What this tab uh, signifies is 1099s, okay? If we need to report uh, information relative to a supplier for 1099s, we're going to flag that here. We can again have some defaults uh, for the particular boxes that we typically pay. Again, it can be changed at any point. We can do tax ID validation from within the software and from the menu perspective I'm just going to go back to the menu here and I'm going to search for 1099 and just show you that we have got all the forms features and functionality to basically you know really manage the 1099 process very well in addition I'm going to go to this activity tab so after I've seen all the set of information about a particular supplier I can also see all the records that I have in the software for that particular supplier so I can here see now all of their invoices I can filter this by open or closed invoices again I can click on a column header it will sort by that column header and as well at any point it looks like Excel, right? We can export to Excel. We can also personalize what we're viewing here through the columns. Again, there's a lot of information. If I scroll through all of the available fields in this particular view, there's a lot. Nobody wants to look at all of this. Turn on and off the particular fields that are important on that particular screen. In addition to which we can also, um, if I click the little ellipsis here, show summaries. So for any numeric column here, I can look at the sum, the average, the minimum, the maximum, and the count. So as you know, even though we can drop down to Microsoft Excel at any given point in time, perhaps sometimes Sometimes I can just answer the question um, that I need to do without having to take that down to Microsoft Excel. So again, just wanted to acclimate you to the screens and the structure um, as we go into further um, programs here. And if you recall, we got all this way just by starting, and I'm going to come back to my active homepage, with an Epicor data discovery tile deployed to the homepage that took us all the way into that supplier and, and really just told us everything we needed to know about that particular record. So just a little bit on navigation there. There's a lot more. Again, I'd love to have an opportunity to show you everything in more detail. But next, we're going to move into some of the functionality relative to the financials. What I want to start off with here is talking about multi-company and what that looks like in the software. So my little user avatar here in the lower left-hand corner, if I click that, what you'll see is that I'm currently logged in as Epicor System Admin. That's my user ID. I'm logged into company 
Shopacore USA. And within that company, I am logged into a site or a location for Chicago. So in Epicor Financials, what a multi-company environment looks like is this drop-down menu has all of the companies available in my database. It's a single database. Each of these companies is not a separate database. They're all structured in the single database. So these are all the companies that I have in my demo database. Now this is security driven. I'm only gonna see what I should see. If I should only see Epicor USA, that's all that's going to deploy here for me. And as mentioned but, um, within that company, I can have multiple sites or locations as well. And our standard posting rules are structured to accommodate this, uh, con this configuration. From a functionality perspective with a multi-company environment, and I'm just gonna go ahead, whoops, and I, uh, let's just go full screen here. I thought I was gonna be clever and and use a shortcut key, but I did wanna go just to take a look at what does multi-company mean from a financials perspective. Within General Ledger and in other functional areas, you're gonna see the word global. What that means is that I can create a record and synchronize that record out to other companies in my database. I don't have to create the same record multiple times for multiple companies that use that same record. So global chart of accounts, if you wanna have a common chart of accounts, we can accommodate that. Multi-company journal entries and allocations means right in the entry screens there, I can charge off all or a portion of an entry or an allocation to another company in the database, uh, it's gonna synchronize automatically and the do to do from offsets are going to happen automatically. 